Hey everyone, sorry I've been kind of not around. Been having a lot of things happen. Today's video is a technique that has been shown before, and I don't know if people, you know, really realize it or not, so I'm going to kind of show it again. And you don't have to have expensive software like Corel Draw to play along and do this. Um, as you see, I got GIMP up, and I also have Inkscape up, <clears throat> two freebie softwares that you can use for this. The idea is behind today's little tip lesson, whatever you want to call this, is if you happen to have a little crafter machine that can cut vinyl or even any or any other material that you want to do, and somebody brings you something that that was maybe made in vinyl and has potato chipped or flaked away, and you need to kind of re recreate that, but you don't know what the font is, this technique can help you better recreate the file than any other technique that I know of. Now it's not the quickest technique but it's probably going to be your best bet. Reason why is a couple reasons. A, the human eye is better than any tracing software that there is. So just keep that in mind and I'll tell you why in just a second. And B, you can repair something like you got up, up here on screen by you know making files or you can try to trace over it with a pen and recreate the letter forms that way but there's a reason why on something like this especially if this is a real file like what me like what we had to do this may not be beneficial the reason why is sometimes when vinyl potato chips cracks peels whatever you'd like to call it it will shrink away it the as the vinyl dries it shrinks and because of it it's not the same size but luckily for you the adhesive usually stays behind and it will leave a little ghost of where it was at if you go through your tracing software and say, oh, I'm just going to trace this, or I'm, I got a pen tool, I'm just going to trace around what I can see, you might not get the correct letter form. Where, if I, again, if this was a real life example, you might see like a little bit of ghosting where some of these cracks are. You'll be able to actually see that, use this technique to fill it in, and then run your trace across it, and then clean it up, and then get it ready for cut, whatever you need to do, or a logo that a customer may want on the website. So that's what this technique is about, is how do we use a raster program to help a vector program do a better trace on something like this and uh, get a project out the door. Now I will say if you combine a raster program with a vector program when you're trying to trace something you're going to come out a little bit better ahead because a lot of these tracing programs I'll give you all a little bit of secrets to it they go by contrast so the more contrast the better two a lot of them are colorblind now they can some of them do separate by color don't get me wrong and Inkscape can separate by color but realistically it might be better just to recreate the color if it's a simple enough design in this case here I went for a simple black and white just to you know be the simplest but again most programs are only going to do shades of shades of hue they're not going to say oh that is crimson red and that's you know navy blue it's not going to do that normally now some can some can't depends on the tracer that you're using but the safest bet is just to go ahead and say, okay, I'm go I know this is supposed to be this color, this is supposed to be that color, and tackle each one and get it done. Now, if you do have a program like CorelDRAW can do it, I'm pretty sure Inkscape can do it, or some other programs, hey, if it can discern color and you can map it to a color, great. That might save you a little bit of headache. But just remember sometimes you don't have that luxury sometimes what you're doing is just a simple two color best thing to do so like if this lettering was we'll say you know grass green for example okay I know it's grass green but I got it to black and white because it's the highest contrast I can go and it's going to give me the best result so with all these in mind let's go ahead and get started the idea is is for you to bring in a picture of what you're trying to recreate into a vector program do any cleanup and that's what we're getting ready to do here is do any cleanup see if we can make this the best we can do now in real life you're not going to have a fuzzy edge around the lettering that was because I put this in with an anti-aliased edge and made it real real soft 
So one of the things you can try if you have some or if your photo quality didn't get in that good is you can always try to make your contrast higher, sharpen it, whatever. But for this demo, I'm just showing you how you can repair damage such as this. And it's simpler than you think. Believe it or not, you're just going to go over to your toolbox, depends on which program you're using, and you're going to pick up a simple paintbrush. And if you've got black lettering or however you got the lettering on here, you're going to make sure your color is black. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the size down until it fits inside the letter, letter form. I can't even speak today and I had coffee and that's sad. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in. And what you're going to do, we're going to make this a little smaller. You want it to fit inside your letter form. And what you're going to do is you're going to actually make sure you got your your layer selected. If, you, if your raster program does layers, you're going to actually paint in the damaged or missing parts. Again, this is the reason why I say sometimes this is the best way is because if I had a ghosting that was occurring right here and say like if I didn't know this bulb was here so like if that was all the way chopped off and I'll show you what I'm pointing to is this right here if I didn't see it because that piece of vinyl was flicked completely away I would see the outline left behind by the adhesive and the dirt and the sand and everything else that would stick to the adhesive that's been exposed that's why this technique works very well and I actually used this on a project not too long ago to redo some lettering on a mailbox. I would use that example, but unfortunately the people that we did it for asked for me not to use that as an example, so I'm going to buy by their wishes. That's why I kind of made up this example here. Move the over right here, but as you guys get the idea, I mean, now, if you have a current, uh, very, very, very keen eye, not current eye, I'm sorry, and you know what the letter type is, then you're ahead of the game. You can say, oh, I could just recreate that because that is so-and-so and so type of letter style. Well, go ahead and do it that way if you can. That's actually the best way to do it there, too. As you see, I'm quickly... This don't take very long. I mean, it is a little bit tedious because you got to kind of use your eye, which I said is the best way to go anyway, when you're trying to recreate something, and it has to be as exact as possible. Some customers you can get away with, you know, coming close. Some of them, it needs to be exact. Because what you might be dealing with might be a corporate logo. It could be anything that requires precision. As you see, fairly quickly on this file, and I cracked this up pretty good using a technique where I used, like, um, a JPEG of the desert floor and kind of, you know, inside a GIMP cracked this up to somewhat simulate, it's not exactly simulating, but somewhat simulate the uh, effect of uh, sun burned up vinyl. We'll just kind of see how quick I can get through this. I mean, it's going pretty quickly, so. But you can use this technique with Corel Draw with uh, Photo Paint. You can use it with Illustrator with uh, Photoshop. The only ones that you can't probably really do this with, I mean, you could probably do it with, uh, I'm not sure because I haven't really checked it out because I did a video on how bad their tracing program is and it kind of turned me off on it, is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, is Zara might have it. I know you can't do this with, uh, Unless you have an outside graphic, um, and I'm, I cannot speak to that. I, I do apologize because it does not have really an external one that comes with it. Is Draw Plus from Serif, and I'm getting ready to do a video on showing why I think Serif is really missing the boat with people because they are not allowing a fully functional demo. They say, "Oh, try this program for free." You know, okay, I did, and I have, and I got it, and I'm. We'll be doing a video shortly on why, if they would allow a full-fledged demo, working demo, that they would be a lot better off because a lot of features that I would like to test don't work. They want you to pull the trigger and pay for it, which is fine, but before I buy software, I try to make sure it works. That's one thing I can give Zara some kudos on is 
they do give you a fully functional demo. Same thing with uh, with Corel Draws. They will give you a fully functional demo. Looks like this side of the lettering got worse than the other. But as you can tell, you know, you got enough of a gap here, and if you set your brush right, it don't take long to recreate the letter form. Now, it might be a little rough because I did do anti alias with this, and I should have just left it stair step and let the trace program kind of smooth it out. But again, this was for demo, and I couldn't find anybody that had any peeling decals that I could use for this demonstration. This won't take but a little bit of a second here, folks. Now, if you have a graphics tablet, this will probably go a lot quicker. Oops. That's probably a little wavy. So, if you do kind of make a mistake, the awesome thing is you can change to the background color and kind of clean up your, your mess. That's why I'm saying you can clean up, too, if there's like a lot of specks or dirt or dust that might cause the tracing program to miscalculate. You can just go right in here and say, hey, I can clean that right up. Sometimes you can cheat by using like a dust and scratches filter or smoothing filter to to smooth it down. Sometimes you're just not going to be that lucky. So I just want to repair the majority of the damage before I bring it into Inkscape. Let's see, that's not exactly smooth, but maybe we'll be okay with it. And what I'm doing for most of this, folks, if, you know, if you can maybe hear through the microphone, because I got one of these cheap-ass little microphones, sorry for my language right there, it slipped, is uh, I'm just kind of doing kind of like a, a clicking technique, kind of like I do when I clone. I just kind of do a click and move kind of a technique. Right here where the T, the bottom stroke of the T has really been kind of momic by my setting up for this demonstration file you can you know as you can tell it is kinda of did this now again I'm just gonna guess here because I don't know where that went but again if you was doing this in real life you'd actually see where the where the old adhesive and everything else still is and you can kind of go from there and use that as your guide. But on this, since this is a digital file, I don't have that luxury, so I have to guess. Wonderful, ain't it? All right. All right. I'm gonna say this is close enough for government work. All right, as you see, we kind of filled in the file here. Again, I didn't do a great job kerning it, nothing. I just did this as a quick little example. Now what I want to do is I want to save as, it could be anything, JPEG will be fine. Oop, I need to go to export and actually do it that way. Export as, now I can choose where it goes. I got to find that later, but that's fine, we could do that momentarily go into demo because that's where I want it to go uh, untitled PNG PNG is fine as soon as I get this here let's see demo will be fine export say background color resolution we don't need creation time that's fine I don't have a comment uh, that'll be fine just export be fine now we just go over to Inkscape. And now what I want to do is I want to import that in, which is right here. And I want to go to do 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 demo. 
bring that in. It does not matter if we embed or link it at this moment because we're not going to use it for that long. There's my file. That's fine for right now. I don't want to stretch it too much. Now we can go with it selected up to path and we can say trace bitmap. Grab this over here. I'm going to live preview it. Brightness cut off. Well, that looks pretty good right there where it is, but you can adjust the brightness cutoff because we're just using black and white. And say OK. We can kill this dialog. And there's our vector right there made from our bitmap. As you can tell right now, it's not exact and it might need to be cleaned up. But at least this way here, this cleanup here may take you a lot less time than if you was to try to do what we did with the paintbrush because that may take you one. Now if you have a program that you can draw lines and then you know, convert them to a solid object and then do a mathematical operation, hey, if that's the way you want to work, hey, go ahead. But you might want to try this because this may work out better for you. Just give it a shot and let me know how you guys make out. Like I said, this I've known of this technique for a while. I did it uh, recently. I did a lot more careful because it was a live project, but you guys should get the idea. All right, guys, thanks for watching this one, and I'll hopefully hit you again next time with another one. My next video is not going to be that exciting. It's going to be basically like I was discussing earlier in this video about demos and how they can be a real, you know, get you to maybe take the hook and maybe purchase something, or it can be a killer. Now, I'm still thinking about Draw Plus, don't get me wrong, but I'm going to show you why it's a little frustrating. Alright folks, hope you like this one and have a good one.